put something underneath the mic. Um, and we got away with that for a while, for a while. Um, so as far as my dad knew why he was locked up, I tried my hardest. I really did to keep um, solidifying to him that, listen, just concentrate on your case. Everything else is okay. Um, his instructions to me were, is that he didn't want me doing anything that would jeopardize his case or jeopardize myself, uh, where I would get pinched. He's like, really, because they would love to grab you and dangle you in front of me. And I'm like, well, even if that, that is what they're trying to do, it ain't going to make a difference. I said, because if I get pinched, I come to my time. So it's neither here nor there. Um, so for the most part, my dad was very proud, and, and that, that's the truth. He was very proud um, of how I carried myself uh, those 13 months that he was away. Uh, he was getting good reports from other people as well. Um, but mind you, at the time, um, I was kind of handcuffed on certain things that I was able to do in the street. Um, so... I wound up doing some things that really could have got my father jammed up, um, like playing with counterfeit money. Um, and then I started to gamble. Not only did I have bookmaking offices, but I started to gamble on my own. I figured, hey, I know sports, you know, I need money coming in. Uh, so it didn't work out. So I, I must have lost in those 13 months anywhere between 100 and 150 grand. So when he came home, the very first day, I kept saying to him, I need, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. Um, and now, at, you know, for those 13 months, I had to keep the books as well. So now my accounting was all spot on, 1,000% of the spot on. Um, but the money wasn't there. It was, it was about 150 light. And, you know, I said, you know, this is why I needed to talk to you. I says, uh, I, I was gambling for those 13 months. So, and he just looked at me like very casually. He's like, so, so how much? He's like, what, 20? I'm like, he's like 30? I'm like, he's like 50? I'm like, He's like, really, what the fuck? That was the next words out of his mouth. Like, really, what the fuck? And uh, he's like, are we talking around 100? And I was just like, he's like, oh, yes. man. He's like, he's like we're going to have to pick up this conversation a little later. Um, he had people coming by the house to see him. So uh, I think it may, might have been the next day. Um, he was going to the book, and he saw that all the accounting was right, but... Uh, certain amounts of cash was missing. Um, now, what happened was a lot of guys that were in the book that were making their, their Shylock payments every week, um, when they found out that I was gambling, um, I got shelved. Let, let me just put it that way. A lot, of, a lot of people don't understand. Well, if you're an associate, how do you get shelved? I heard that before. Yeah. I'm like, first of all, my father was Wild Bill, and I'm his son. So, yeah, I got shelved, you know. Um, he didn't tell me, hey, you're never coming to the club again. He just told me, you're not allowed up at the club right now. Um, everything that you got going on in the street stops. Um, you cannot talk to anybody. If I find out they're talking to you, I'm going to hurt them. So make sure before someone starts to talk to you, you warn them first. And I remember sometimes walking out of the house on 48th Street. And, like, people in my neighborhood, like, if they saw me, they would try to duck behind a fucking telephone pole. I'd be like, man, I could see you. Like, what the, what the fuck? But they were afraid to talk to me. Um, so that lasted, yeah, that lasted a few months uh, that he shelved me. Um, but then my mother was the one who actually pushed uh, to get me back up to the club, believe it or not. Um, she turned around and said, Bill, can't, can't you just take your son back up to the club, man? He, like, he sits out there like a puppy dog. You know, he sits on the stoop waiting for you to come home. 
you know, he, he tweets, you know, he walks you out every morning. I can't believe how windy it got. Jesus Christ, it's never like this. Um, so anyway, um, it was my mother who pushed for it. And uh, one Saturday, he just came out of the house and just said to me, hey, what are you doing today? Nothing. Yeah, if you're not doing that, why don't you come up to the club? And, you know, the rest was history after that. I, I, uh, I got back up to the club. Um, a lot of guys, as I was saying, um, that found out I was gambling, and once they found out I got shelved, a lot of guys, scumbag guys, tried to turn around and say that they paid off their debt. Now, there were a few, you know. The accounting, like I said, the books were correct. The money was just like um, so my dad had turned around and told me, he's like, really, what am I supposed to do? These guys know you were gambling, okay? If they're telling me that they paid you, how the fuck am I supposed to turn around and say that they didn't? Even though I believe you, he's like, I, you know, so a lot of guys had gotten forgiven, uh, for some of their show uh, yeah. um, so. Well, for, so so now, so what happens? So your father gets acquitted. I, again, at this part, I'm not as familiar with. So at this point, your father gets acquitted and gets back out on the street mid nineties. Uh, yes, he came home in November. Or excuse me, December of ninety five. Okay. Um, him and all his co defendants, um, they all went to trial together. Whereas some of them wanted to be severed from the case because. When you go to trial with someone as polarizing as my dad was, um, some of the guys felt that they weren't going to get a fair trial yeah. because my dad was involved in the case. Yeah. And my dad put the kibosh on that from day one saying, no, we got into this together. We're going to fight it together and we're going to walk out of here together. So my dad did a lot of work on his own, his own case. Um, he was at every lawyer meeting uh, with them. Um, paid for a lot of the guys' lawyers.